Chapter 97 The Pirates Beck, Sai, while awesome, the slow motion slam dunk and intercept are only possible through axiom use. Stop cheating, you motherfuckers, Jean Luc says as he watches the Egyptian and the Indian mess around in midair. It sorts itself out fast as they return to normal speed and the three pointer isn't counted. Most of the guys are on the newly built beachside basketball court, but Jake's manning a barbecue with all the sauces for human consumption as Franklin is just drifting in the nearby waters. Ah, come on, that was cool! Let him do it! One of the Met girls cheers out. The entire crew is out on the beach to relax for a day. The night of death, as many were now calling it, had been followed by several days of trying to stop things from breaking down and settling everything down enough to take a quick break and then get back to things. Leading to a basketball game, swimming, barbecue, and just napping and relaxing in the sun. Some of the girls have hooked up tow lines to a few boats and are wakeboarding, and that's if their lower bodies aren't so tough they can't just surf on them instead. The Nagasha are particularly having fun with that. The basketball game of shirts versus skins resumes into another flurry to the cheers of the crowd around them. Sweaty and fit men charging at each other and moving fast and strong is basically a real-time softcore porn. So why aren't you joining in? Jen asks Jake and he smirks. The big snake woman has her makeup on and light touches to show she's playful, not taking things seriously and just letting things loose. What are you kidding? Those idiots can barely play. Sure, dunking on them without axiom would be fun and showing them exactly how much they suck could be worth a chuckle or two. But we need some grub and I like grilling as much as dribbling so I get to do something I love either way and I don't piss everyone off. Win-win. Jake replies as he brushes the meat with his personal recipe barbecue sauce. Not to mention I know basketball, I don't know about cooking thigh to birds. So this is interesting. How is cooking some local bird on a grill interesting? Easy enough. The things I grilled back home, tame, organized, and easy. These? We caught them ourselves, plucked them, gutted them, and now we're cooking them. I haven't grilled wild bird before. I mean, I went hog hunting once while in training, and damn if that boar didn't cook like a dream, but these ostrich-looking beasts never cooked anything like that. And this is relaxing to you? Jin asks curiously. Oh yeah, it's a break from all the making and breaking of things. Our bodies are healing and recovering from all the work fast enough. And you girls have been working in shifts to stay refreshed, but the mind needs time to relax and heal. This is like a whole day of sleeping or even better. Tomorrow it's back to the grind. Then after three days of pushing hard, you boys will be back here again, or somewhere else having fun. You work, 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 then play as hard as you work then back to work. Our bodies can handle the labor every day without issue, but the mind and soul needs more. As I said, this whole day, despite the boys working harder on that basketball game than most of the things we've been doing all week, like driving supplies around and looking over the shoulders of our technicians in training, this day is relaxing. Woo! There's a cheer from the shore and Jake and Jen both look to see Franklin walking out of the water with a huge fish in his hands. There are further cheers as the feely of the crew. In particular, Mabby all but jump on him for it, leading to an amusing chase as she runs off giggling with it with Franklin chasing but laughing so hard he can barely stay upright. Oh man, I hope he's not asking me to cook that. I suck the hard one at grilling fish. Jake notes as the chase grows larger as every girl that Franklin's been boning down with joins in the pointless but entertaining chase. So what next? Jin asks, getting comfortable again. Nothing much beyond stick to the plan. While you girls get a better and better grip on this place and worry about who's doing what we're getting to fixing things to streamline it all. We're going back to training the technicians to repair and maintain the communication towers and satellites. Mari's got a hell of a good head under her horns to start up the schools. After that is the hospitals and such. 
recruiting sheriffs and officers of the law to ensure our rule is strong. Get all the communities on board with all this and keep going from there. There's a lot to build and make and teach, and we need all of it about a year ago, but rushing will only slow us down in the long run, so we've got to take little breaks or risk losing a lot, Jake explains as he turns over the drumsticks in front of him with a frown. Does this look cooked to you? He asks, holding one up with a pair of tongs for them both to examine. Not sure. My food isn't normally slathered in poisons, she remarks quickly as she leans away from the drumstick. Jake brings it close to his face and takes a sniff. He then plops it on a plate to the side and cuts into it with a steak knife. Hmm. It seems to be cooked through. No blood, firm skin. It's done, but is it good? He asks before taking a big bite of the oversized drumstick. He chews and swallows with a big grin. That's the good stuff. We'll need to see if these Thyta birds can be ranched or farmed or whatever. Gods, that would have killed me to eat, Jen remarks as Jake takes another bite of the massive leg. Which is a pity. This is the good stuff. I can grill like a boss. Jake boasts even as Franklin, Mabby, and the mob rush up. I don't do fish, Jake shouts at them and they skid to a stop with a groan of disappointment. Come on then. Let's build a fire pit and have it charred and roasted on a spit, Mabby exclaims, and there's a cheer. Hey, Frank, Jake calls before he can rush up with them. The Axiom user walks over. I thought you weren't much for seafood, man. It's making them happy, and today's not about pissing around, it's being in a good place. Besides, maybe this time I'll like it, Franklin asks with a shrug. Maybe this mean you ain't going to be having some of these, Jake asks, holding up one of the massive drumsticks. Save one for me, maybe even two if they taste as good as they smell, Franklin says before rushing off. Smells like death, Jin remarks. Hey, that's uncalled for, Jake jokes and she snorts in amusement. Hey guys, wrap it up, dinner's nearly ready. Did you hear that? We need to speed this up. Quick husband make with the woo-woo, Mabby calls. The woo-woo, Franklin demands in a flabbergasted tone. You know what I mean. I do. I just never heard it called that before. The woo-woo, what the hell? Franklin asks, before the sound of rushing flames kicks off and the fish is hurled into the air. Streams of fire cascade into and surround the large fish before it starts floating down, unbound by gravity. Charbroiled fish? That's not too shabby. Marcus note as he walks up downing an electrolyte-filled drink in a hurry. The day is hot and bright with the men drenched in sweat and all the girls are all but devouring them with their eyes. The fish that Franklin Flash cooked is torn apart by the girls and he only has a handful himself before joining the rest of the men for the drumsticks. Not so good? Jake asks around a tall glass of the mead that they'd cracked open just the day before. It's good but I still don't like seafood. Franklin answers as he grabs one of the enormous drumsticks. So what's the verdict? Think we'll be eating more of these? Oh, hell yes. It's like someone crossbred a chicken and a turkey before scaling it up to an ostrich's size, Jake remarks. Bit of math for how long to cook it and we've got a feast. Darling, that was so good. Think you can get some more? Mabby begs Franklin as she all but pounces on his back and he smiles. She flinches away at the slight amount of barbecue sauce on his face. Yay, yeah, sure. I'll finish this up first, though. Hard to do things with an empty tank, you know? Franklin responds and Jake considers. You girls have your own food, though. I saw you pack a feast. What's wrong? Prefer things fresher? Miles asks from his perch under a nearby tree and Mabby nods. Huh. Well, we may as well. Who's up for a bit of hardcore fishing? We all need to cool down anyways. The general opinion is a big yes from everyone, and the meal is quickly inhaled before a rush for the water. Hey man, you shut this down. You've been the in the water already, Jake says to Franklin. And before the man can protest, is halfway down the beach and kicking off his sandals before hitting the water. 
The rest of the men are shortly behind him, followed by nearly half the different races of Nagasha in the crew leading to 30 people hitting the water like it owes them something. Hey, jerks, Franklin mutters as instead of using the wire brush, he simply snaps his fingers and the grill is clear of all grime and dirt. He turns off the gas and lets it burn off before closing the lid. You made that easy. Mabby compliments him and he nods before reaching into the cooler and grabbing a bottle of some basic beer made off the ship. I thought you didn't like that stuff, she asks. I don't, but it'll clean my mouth out for other things. Besides, I gave seafood another try. Why not alcohol? He asks before taking a swig. The feely engineer breaks down and giggles at the look of sheer disgust on his face. I love it. He lies through his teeth and she nearly collapses in laughter. Franklin, however, is a game sort and he quickly pounds back the beer before ending in a gag. I still question the intelligence of my species with slop like this being one of the more popular drinks, he says before throwing it back to finish it off. Then why did you keep drinking it? Mabby asks, around some giggles as he lets out a burp. Very elegant. The main purpose of an alcoholic drink in the historical context is a supply of water that is completely clean of any contaminants. In this context, though, he says, before swallowing his spit a bit to make sure as much as possible is cleaned out. He then leads in fast and kisses her. She flinches back and blinks in shock. Oh, oh wow, I feel like I just had a drink, Mabby notes. Our booze is so strong that after we drink it, we can get you secondhand drunk on top of it, clearing out everything you might not like in my mouth. Care to explore this? He asks, and she gives him a sultry smile before pulling out a container. Only if you've got a good taste, Rinse, she says, and he opens his mouth to let her pour the drink in. He rinses and gargles for a few moments before swallowing. Ew, that was just a breath cleanser. Limeade is a cleanser? he asks curiously. Limeade? she asks in confusion. Like lemonade, but with limes, is his entirely unhelpful answer.